talk about uh, the time dependent circuit. Time dependent circuit. Okay. Um, if we have battery connected with a switch and there is a capacitor and connected with the resistor, capacitance C, resistance is R, battery's voltage is V. V not. Okay. Um, then if I close the switch at time equal to zero, close the switch. Then at the moment when I close the switch, the battery is going to charge the capacitor. So I will see a positive um, charge on this side and negative charge on this side. So at the beginning, there's current. Okay. But after long time, the charge is done. Then there's no connection um, on the capacitor. So that means no current at this case. No current through the capacitor. Because no connection. So this is very important. At a steady state, no current and in the capacitor, there are a stable electric field, but there's no current. And if we draw a diagram, I as a function of time, the current as a function of time, the current in this, in this circuit will be start from a maximum current drop down to zero. So when it goes to zero, this part is called steady state. And the left part is called time dependent circuit. Time dependent. In this case, you will find that the current voltage on the capacitor, voltage on the resistor are or and on um, the, the time, all functions of time. Okay. And we want to know the expression. So our motivation is to get the expression of I voltage of the capacitor, voltage of the resistor as a function of time. This is our motivation. So how can we get the expression? And from the curve, uh, we might know um, the curve is exponential decay, but why? I show you why. So from the circuit, we know there are three elements, battery, capacitor, and the resistor. And we have the voltage equation, that is the total voltage on the battery is split into two parts. So the first part go to the capacitor and this, the other part go to the resistor. So the voltage on the capacitor plus the voltage on the resistor should equal to the voltage on the battery. Okay. And according to Ohm's law, Ohm's law said the voltage of the resistor is equivalent to the current through the resistor times the resistance. So we can plug in this expression into the first equation. We will get the total voltage equal to the voltage of the capacitor plus the current times the resistance. This is the first part. Then let's check what's the voltage of the capacitor as a function of the current. Of the current. For the capacitor, we know if the voltage change 
if the voltage of the capacitor change, then it will induce here induce the current and the current actually is equivalent to the resistance uh, uh, capacitance I'm sorry mm -hmm. capacitance times the change of the voltage over over time and if you don't know how to get this relation I tell you how to get this and we know the definition of the capacitance is uh, voltage of the capacitance over oh, hold on the charge on the capacitance over the voltage of the capacitance okay the, the capacitor and all the these parameters are on the capacitor and this is only in the case when charge and the voltage are the constant we can use this equation if the charge of the function time, the voltage is a function time, I have to use the derivative equation. Okay, use derivative. And we know the definition of the current actually is the derivative of the charge over time. That's the change rate of the charge. So I can solve the charge in a small piece of time interval. That would be the current times the time interval and I plug in this part into this equation I will get the capacitance equivalent to the I dt over dv on the capacitor then I can solve the current on the capacitor that will be the C times dv on the capacitor over the time so this is how I get this relation this relation is not on the equation sheet. I hope you can write this on the equation sheet. Okay, after you have this one, I'm going to plug in into this equation. Then I will have V now. This is our master equation. V now equal to the VC voltage on the capacitor plus the current is C times EV C over T times R. This is the quote master equation of RC circuit. And this equation is a derivative equation because we have a derivative in this equation. So how to solve the equation is a little bit tricky. I'll tell you how to do this. Um, let's uh, move this part to the right and move this one to the left. Then I have RC minus EVC over DT plus equal to VC minus V0. Okay. And there is a derivative, so I can uh, use the derivative minus a constant, then the derivative doesn't change because the, this one is a constant. So I use VC minus a V0. So in the derivative, if the parameter minus a constant, the derivative doesn't change. So in this case, I can use new letter use capital V okay. to label the VC minus V now. Then this equation could be simplified as minus RC E new voltage over T then voltage. Okay. So this is a derivative of V as a function of T. So let's solve this. I move the V to this side. I move the RC on the right side. Then I have E V dt. Oh uh, no, not D. E V over V equivalent to the minus one over RC dt. 
Then I do the integral on both sides. Then on the left side, that will be the log V equivalent to the minus R C T and plus a constant because this is a derivative, so I can plus any constant. Okay, then I could um, get the voltage actually is an exponential decay, dt over rc, time a constant. Actually, the constant is a maximum voltage. See, this is maximum. RC. Okay, then let's um, replace the, the capital V by using VC minus V non. So we have VC minus V non is equivalent to the V maximum minus dt over rc. Then we will have the voltage on the capacitor, this one. Okay. So you will find that the voltage on the capacitor, the voltage on the capacitor uh, here, is a exponential curve. And this exponential curve give us a value. So if we just check, um, check this uh, current and the voltage, we will get a lot of exponential curve. So let's do this. Um, we know, let me write, draw this diagram in this case. I have a capacitor, I have the resistor, R, C, V now. And we know the current inside the circuit is the exponential decay. And I just show you the, the voltage is the exponential decay. And the current actually is equal to the voltage of the resistor over the resistance. So they should have the same shape um, as the current this current maximum current and how to write down the equation so the i non i should equal to maximum current times a exponential decay t over the rc so the rc is here we just solve this equation we get the rc on the denominator of the index so uh, we know for the exponential index the index should be dimensionless. The index is dimensionless. So the RC has a unit of time. That's a second. So we call the RC as a time constant. I use the tau to represent the time constant that equal to RC. This is a very important part, and I think you can write this on the equation sheet. So that means if you have a capacitor connect series with a resistor, then the time constant is equal to the RC. It's a current, and for the voltage on the resistor, the voltage on the resistor is equal to the current time R. Right, so that would be the I non, the maximum current times the R exponential decay. Actually, you will find that the maximum current times the resistance is the voltage's battery, as the battery is voltage. That's a maximum voltage. Okay, then let's check the voltage on the resistor, uh, on the uh, capacitor. That will be the battery's voltage minus 
the resistor's voltage. Then I will have V non minus V non exponential decay. And we can simplify this equation as maximum uh, voltage times one minus exponential decay. So this is not difficult, right? Um, we have the curve of Vc as a function of time. And you will find that this is an increasing function. So at the beginning, when t equal to zero, then the voltage of the capacitor will be equal to v naught times e minus one minus one. That will be zero. So as the beginning, the voltage is start from zero, and when time equal to infinity, we have this guy equal to zero. So the voltage on the capacitor is equivalent to the voltage of the battery. So this is V non goes up. This is the curve of the voltage on the capacitor. Any question? Yeah, so with these types of questions, um like with these rc circuits like can we are can we like automatically skip to like these ending exponential equations or do we need to like show the derivation or no what there's I'm just no gonna... way to show the derivation um i will tell you some trick to solve such problem and this is my next step so okay we have a circuit that's a time dependent circuit to write down the expression, we have three steps. First one, we're going to determine that the curve goes up or goes down. So if it goes up, look like this, then the expression will be value equal to maximum value times one minus exponential time over a time constant. You can write this on the equation sheet. And if it drop down, something like this, then the expression will be the value, maximum times, uh, hold on, times exponential t over top. And the value could be current, voltage, uh, charge, or electric field. And the maximum should be uh, maximum current, maximum voltage, maximum charge, and maximum electric field. That's the first step. Second step, and determine the, the time constant. The time constant tau when a resistor connected with the capacitor the time constant is equal to RC. And if it's not a capacitor, it's an inductor, that will be another value. I will show you later. So this is the second step, determine the time constant. The third one, determine the maximum value. So the maximum voltage is very easy. That's uh, maximum voltage is the battery's voltage. That's the maximum. And the maximum current, you want to know that it should be the battery's voltage over the resistance. So this is the three steps to figure out the expression of time-dependent circuit. Okay, then let's move to the inductor. Suppose if I have a battery connected with switch and I have a uh, solenoid with uh, resistance, the inductance is L, resistance is R, battery voltage is V now. Okay. So at time equal to zero, I switch on the circuit. The switch is closed. Then 
then at that time, the inductor actually is going to induce an opposite battery, opposite voltage against um, to oppose the increasing of the voltage. So at the beginning, the resistance of the inductor is infinity. So in the circuit, there's no current. No current in the circuit. Because the inductor oppose the change of the current. But when time goes to infinity, everything is stable. So if current is stable, there's, there's no induced voltage on the inductor. There's no induced voltage on the inductor. Then that means all the voltage will um, added on the resistor. Then in this case, the current in the circuit is equal to the battery's voltage over the resistance. And the inductor could be treated as a wire. A wire. The inductor is treated as a wire. Okay, so if we draw a diagram current to the circuit. So at the beginning, it goes to zero, and then it goes up. And maximum value will be the battery's voltage over the R. Then we also want to know the expression of time-dependent current. So let's do the derivation. So this is the cost, I show you the derivation. But in the R exam, you don't need, need to write down derivation. You just uh, have to write down the expression. That's fine. So we we can go back to the first equation. The battery's voltage is equivalent to the voltage of the inductor plus the voltage of the resistor. And we know Ohm's law tells us this is equivalent to the current times the resistance. Okay. And we also know the voltage induced by the inductor is equivalent to the inductance times the change of the current. So if you don't know how we get this equation, um, I show you how I do this. Uh, the inductance has a definition that's the uh, uh, flux, magnetic flux inside the solenoid divided by the current. This is uh, an equation only apply for the case when the index, uh, when the current and the flux are constant. If those are time dependent, I have to use the derivative equation. And we also know the flux, change of the flux is equivalent to the voltage. This is the Friday's law. If the magnetic flux change, then that will induce an EMF. The EMF is a voltage. And I can solve the flux as change of the time times the voltage. Then I plug this uh, expression into this equation. So I will have V dt over di. Then the voltage on the inductor could be solved as inductance times the di over dt. So this is how I get this relation. Then I plug this equation into this one to get a master equation for the LR circuit. So the, uh, total voltage is equivalent to the L times di dt plus i R. This is master equation. In the L R circuit. This is also a derivative equation. 
So we can solve it. And the i actually is exponential um, exponential curve. And you will find that the current is increasing. The current at the beginning is equal to zero, and then go to the saturate maximum. And this will be equal to the i non times one minus exponential t over l over r. Okay, this is the time constant for the uh, inductor and the resistor connection in series circuit. So the time constant is equivalent to the l inductance over the resistance r. This is the four. Doctor, resistor, series connection, serial connection, circuit. Okay. So if we want to know the voltage on the resistor, the voltage on the resistor, that will be uh let's see the current in the circuit times the resistance so that will be i non r one minus t over l over r and this is also an increasing curve voltage at the beginning is zero and then it go to maximum and the maximum actually is a voltage is battery, a battery is voltage. Sorry, so that will be the uh, V num one minus minus T over L over R. So if we want to know the voltage on the inductor, that will be the battery's voltage minus the uh, resistor's voltage. That will be v non minus uh, v non one minus this one L over R. That will be an exponential decay. The curve will be This is an exponential decay curve for the voltage on the inductor. So let's give you a summary how to get the uh, expression of the current the voltage in the time dependent circuit. First step, we have to figure out does the curve goes up or drop down. If it goes up, it should look like this. Start from zero, then end at a maximum point. This is maximum. If it drop down, it will be an exponential decay. Start from the maximum, then decay to zero. If it goes up, the expression will be the value we're looking for um, equal to maximum value times exponential, oh, hold on, not exponential, times one minus exponential minus T over time constant. And for the drop down curve, the value we're looking for is equal to maximum one times a exponential decay. Second step, time constant, determine time constant. If we have a resistor connected with a capacitor, then the time constant is R times C. If we have a resistor, Connect with the inductor, and the time constant is inductance over resistance. Okay, 
So third one, determine the maximum value. So if we want to know i is a function of i non something or v is a function of v non something, it will be the increasing curve or dropping curve. But we just follow this rule. The maximum current, a uh, maximum value of the voltage is the voltage of the battery. Voltage of the battery. That's the maximum battery. Uh, that's the maximum voltage in the circuit. And the maximum current is the maximum voltage over the resistance. So that will be the battery's voltage over the resistance. So this is a trick. I think if you follow the three steps, then you will figure out how to get the expression of the um, of time dependent circuit. Okay, so I talk about the current and the voltage. If we have a conduct, uh, we have a capacitor. If you know the voltage is a function of time, so how can we get the electric field as a function of time? So we have many ways, but I tell you the easiest way is. The electric field is also a function of time and we can use the voltage over the distance. And here, I assume the electric field inside the uh, capacitor is uniform distribution. Then you get the electric field at function of time. How about the charge on the capacitor? The charge. Um, has many ways to do. The first one will be the capacitance, there's a constant times the voltage. So if we know the voltage of time, then we will get the charge of time. This is how we get the electric field and the charge as a function of time. So the first one is to get the voltage of the capacitor. Okay. Then you will find that if the electric field is a function of time, suppose this is uh, exponential decay, then we will have a question. Does the change of the electric field induce the magnetic field? So the answer is yes. If we have a capacitor goes in this way, the electric field is the electric field and the electric field is a function of time. Then in the horizontal direction, there will be a circular induced magnetic field. And according to the Maxwell's equation, Maxwell's equation, um, if we do the line integral of a closed loop for the magnetic field, that will be equal to mu non, epsilon non, the change of electrical flux. So because the electric field is a function of time, so the magnetic field is not zero. So we'll ask such questions. But all of these questions will be starting from a time-dependent circuit. We will ask you to write down uh, the expression of uh, voltage as a function of time. Then we ask you to calculate the electric field and inside the, the, the capacitor. Then. From this one, we're going to ask you to use the Maxwell equation to get the magnetic field as a function of time. So this is uh, the flow of the R exam for such of the problem. Do you have other question? Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, can you explain the direction of the magnetic field um, there? Like, why is that? 
Yeah, but can this you just is just a schematic diagram. It doesn't say the direction is clockwise or counterclockwise. It depends on does the electric field uh, increase or decrease. So for example, if the electric field decrease and the electric field goes down, then let's use right hand row. If it decrease and my thumb should goes up because uh, the changing direction is goes to opposite. Right? My thumb goes up and my forefinger curl clockwise or counterclockwise. So this is the direction for the induced magnetic field. Yeah, sorry, I forgot it was decreasing. Thank you. Okay, so if you don't have other questions, I will see you on Friday. And apart from the quiz, I'm going to review the exam and I will show you some solutions. So that's all. Thank you for coming. Um, one more quick question. <laughs> okay. Um, just with these things, like obviously all these time dependent stuff, we've been focusing on just these uh, circuits in series. Will we ever have to worry about the time dependent part with something like in parallel or something? If we have something in parallel, um, so for example, in this case, then you will find right. that uh, the current in the resistor is not time dependent because the voltage is always V because the voltage doesn't change. What will change is uh, uh, the current into the capacitor. Then that will be a very um, weird case. If we want to use the uh, um, time dependent circuit for some applications, usually we connect them in series. So uh, if you okay. have an exam, um, we want to test you something that could be uh, used into the industry or something could be uh, application in the future. But in parallel part, um, I don't see there are any application. And if we want to test you, that's just a waste of your time. So most of the case, we test you in the series. And for the parallel, um, they will not be in the exam. Okay, thank you, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, but I think the parallel case will be in the stable uh, circuit. Right. The case. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I had a question. Um, when you're determining whether or not the curve goes up and down, that depends on like the switch being opened or closed, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to stop this meeting. Thank you for coming.